So what's it like to be back on set? Um, oh, it's brilliant. It's kind of... Um, I did a couple of things in between, like a couple of short films and stuff, but uh, it's, it's always good to get back on uh, working something like Skins because I was beginning to be a bit of a bum at home. I was getting the whole routine of like waking up at like midday, <laughs> going to bed at about three, uh, so I needed something to whip me out of that, that little cycle, and so yeah, it's brilliant to be back. You've got a bit more direction in your life now then? What, me generally? Me personally? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do, yeah. Whereas before I was going absolutely nowhere. What can we expect from Chris in this series? Um, I think we can expect to see kind of another different side to Chris. I mean, we saw in series one, for the most part, he was the kind of the, the crazy kind of Jack the Lad, um, always up for a party kind of thing. But then in his episode, obviously, you saw there's a lot of kind of a lot of issues and a lot of a lot of hurt that was that was there kind of behind him. This time round, there's another kind of. Uh, facet to his character where he's kind of you see the caring Chris come out it's going to be beautiful <laughs> is it all over for Chris and Angie? Um, not dead and buried but this, you know it's not quite as uh, as kind of I don't know how to, what's it steamy yeah. is probably the word as it once was it's still like a lingering flame yeah 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 there's still, there's still that he still holds a little bit of a torch for him and obviously in the first series, as you said in, in Chris's episode, we saw he's got a pretty harsh family life. Will we see more of that in this series? Um, in a weird way, I don't actually know, because we, we only get like scripts literally a couple of weeks before we start shooting them. Um, so far, there's kind of not much... It's, it's, it's about Chris's independence more than anything. You know, less about his family life and more Chris as a person you know, out there kind of trying to keep himself afloat basically so in what sort of ways does he kind of show his independence um well without wanting to give too much away obviously he's uh, he, he kind of he gets his own place and and you know he, he starts working and you know with very varying degrees of success but um but yeah he's he's, he's, he's kind of finding his feet for the first time he, i think before he always had his kind of mum to kind of fall back on although he had to grow up quite quickly because of what happened with his family I think you know he always had that security and now that's gone so it's kind of how, he, how he's dealing with that Can you relate to Chris as a character are you as much of a Jack the Lad? Um, I can certainly relate to him I can't I wouldn't I would never I wouldn't want to be as, as out and out off my head as, as Chris is but um, but no I can, I can certainly relate to his kind of his his enthusiasm and his just his his, his seemingly eternal optimism. I mean, it's it, it often was the most revealing moments of kind of, of the series for Chris when when he showed some kind of you know when he looked quite down on things because because it's not it's not his usual way. And uh, I'd like to think that I kind of I am like that, but I know, you'd have to ask the people that know me. I don't know. Did you ever fancy one of your teachers? See, I've been asked this quite a bit. And, and I can categorically say there were no hot teachers at my school whatsoever. My, my, my French teacher had hairy, had hairy armpits. That's not even a joke. And it's a bit of a cliche, but she was a walking cliche and a hairy cliche at the same time. So if the kind of the flame between Chris and Angie is only lingering, is there any other chance of romance for him? Um, there may be. There may be, you know. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Chris is, Chris is a lover, not a fighter, you know, so I'm sure there'll be some loving some loving going on at some point and um what's the atmosphere like on set and filming are there any jokers around the set oh there's plenty of jokers we're all jokers in our own way which means that often it takes a long time to actually get work done <laughs> but uh everyone gets along like uh, amazingly well dev is completely hyperactive i think he might have add <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm not quite sure we might want to get him tested or something um We've got, uh, yeah, Mike's, Mike's always up for a laugh and Nick and everyone. And we, we, all, we all have a wicked time. And kind of we get asked sometimes, oh, so, so who do you fancy then out of the cast? And it's like, kind of like asking me if I fancy my sister. Yeah. Because we all get, it's, it sounds cheesy, but we all get along that well that, you know, it's kind of, sorry, you like that, but, you know. What's it like working with some of the, like, the big established actors who play the parents? Oh, it's, it's great. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I kind of, um, so we've had um, Bill Bailey in, in this time, this series, playing uh, Maxie's dad. And it's just, it's kind of, it's so weird because you kind of, you walk on set and you see these, like, these people who you've, you've watched on television for years and 
but for me in a weird way I'm amazingly like I find myself amazingly composed when I'm around them but it's, it's great to just watch them work and I met Harry Enfield for the first time the other week because he's going to actually be directing a couple of episodes in this series and um and I met him, but I just can't help being an absolute fool around him. <laughs> I always think, I'm going to try and be funny, I'm going to try and be funny, and it just fails, like, miserably. Yeah. But he's, he's cool, he's a really cool guy. Have you had any scenes with Shane Ritchie? We did do a scene. I didn't really have any scenes with lines with Shane Ritchie, but, yeah, we had, to, we had a couple of scenes with him, and he's a really, he's a quality actor, and he's a really nice bloke as well. And um, so, yeah, it was great to work with someone like him. And my sister's an East Enders nut, so uh, she, she loved that whole... Did you get an autograph for her? I didn't, do you know what, I didn't. Flat risk. He left before I got the chance. <laughs> Never live it down. Thanks so much for your time. All right, no, Cheers, thank you. Thank you.